Hello and welcome back to Let's Play The Room. So we have just finished day two of nine and Johnny didn't get his promotion so he and Lisa got, you know, rip-roaring drunk and then fucked each other on the couch. Again. Again. Oh, look at that butt. <laughs> he's, he's got a very, he's got those apple bottom jeans, man. Yeah, it's heart-shaped booty. So as always, we will put on his work clothes and then might as well go see what we recorded last night. So we'll take the tape up to his bedroom tape player, where Lisa is sound asleep, and we actually have some content on it this time. Oh. Oh, this is juicy. Yeah, this is good stuff. What's going on? It's finished. This is actually not extended extended universe. This is uh, directly from the movie. Talk about it later. We never do. I love that in every phone call, Mark is like, I don't really give a shit about you. And Lisa's just like, love me, please. Let me tell you all of my problems. I'm not even sure she, I mean, well, yeah, it's true, but you, she's just straight up, she's hurting for a squirting. She was hurting for a squirting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for show. This, Seriously. this movie has some of the most misogynistic writing I've ever experienced. Like, uh, they, yeah. Yeah. Delivery. Yeah, we got half, this. Uh, half Canadian bacon. Yeah, I mean that's a great pizza. Canadian bacon and pineapple. You can tell Johnny's Johnny's working on his macronutrients. Yeah, and his multi multicultural cuisine. Oh yeah, Canada is so multicultural. <laughs> well, I guess it is when you're from like Bosnia, like this guy is. Yeah, most people in the states like don't even know what poutine is, so I don't know. True. Oh, uh, so yeah, in Denny's diary, there's some pertinent information today. Mark asked him if he could score some weed, and uh, now Denny's in trouble with Chris R., his drug dealer, because he can't get the money to pay him back. That's, uh, that's what happens in the, the drug industry, really. Yeah. Um, I don't really understand how much, how much weed could Denny have bought. It looks like he doesn't have a lot of money, considering he lives in a broom closet. Um... Well, it might not necessarily be a money issue. It might just be like, um, too, like, uh, well, I, you know, I don't even know. Just drug I, dealers. I, I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, I, we didn't get our promotion, so we're going to walk home, and we see some uh, somebody asking for help, help on the roof. So Mark's going to join my posse, and we're going to go up here and enter into our first battle. So this game does have a combat system. I'm looking forward to this. Very Pokemon-esque, obviously. It's a little Pokemon-esque, yeah. The graphics are very uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Oh, absolutely. It's so, a... so for Mark, we're going to use his, his Glamour attack, which is going to lower Chris R's defense by making him love-struck, obviously. Oh, so, his shirt's back on. And then by uh, throwing a water bottle at him, we do three times as much damage than Chris R does when he shoots us. <laughs> so, oh, and he blocked our football attack. Should have gone with the Glamour again. Johnny's other attack is taunt, and when you do that, he says, like, Yo, you're just a chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. It's the same thing as Mark's glamour move. And we're going to roll the glamour water bottle combo here. Pretty much the best strategy in the whole game. I mean, that's enough to make me gay. Wow, okay. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> so just one more glamour water bottle combo should be good enough. Stop it, I'm dying over here. <laughs> And yeah, we kill him, he's love struck. He starts bleeding from the mouth. Like, what was that water bottle full of? Dude, that happens in all the movies. You get shot in the gut and you bleed from the mouth. That happens in real life, man. Well, I've never seen it. Okay, fair enough. I have no reply. <laughs> I have no reply. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so now we get to take Chris out of the police station ourselves. And what a nice guy. He's just, like, following us. Pretty, yeah, pretty cooperative. He's just accepted his fate. All right, guys, I know I did something wrong. <laughs> Doc Brown in his radiation suit. Yeah, man. For out-of-time coffee. That should be a real coffee shop, like Back to the Future-themed coffee. This is why no bank will ever give me a loan for a business idea I come up with. <laughs> I've got this great idea, guys. <laughs> out-of-time coffee. And it's only 88 That's... cents a cup. How do you expect to see a return on uh, this... Uh... Well, you know. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Yeah. 
So now we just gotta walk back, uh, now that we've dropped Chris R off at the police station. I love how the police officer says, like, Chris R, we've been looking for a reason to bust you for years. Like, he's this notorious criminal. He's a drug dealer. He's, they are notorious, he, man. He sold a 12-year-old autistic kid, like, a gram of weed. It's the gateway drug dealing thing. Haven't you seen, uh, freaking, what's that, Requiem for a Dream? They're just like, uh, you know. It's not, come on. I, I know, it's not like a, they don't do weed, but I'm just saying. You can't that. bring up Requiem for a Dream. We're talking about the room here, man. I'm just, you know, just, it's, it's important. So, uh, yeah, we got this little cutscene-esque thing going up here on the roof. This is where Claudette becomes kind of like a stark raving mad lunatic. So Mark takes her outside to go fuck her brains out in his hot tub. Who wouldn't? Yeah, just bone her silly. And then we get this heartfelt moment where, uh, Lisa's like, Danny, you know you don't have to smoke pot. Or you don't have to buy it, we could just give you some. She's, you know, Lisa, she's, she's got it all figured out. She's, she's uh, yeah, quite motherly. She's doing, doing Mark on the side and giving out quality advice to, to Denny. Living the dream. Living... <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh. So Denny jerking off while he takes a shit into his urine bucket. That he's, is he's a, self a blumpkin. He is a self, self-made blumpkin. I think that's a first. Uh, well, maybe not. Probably but... not a first. <laughs> no comment. Oh, dear God. But in any case, Lisa's like, go take a shower. I promise I'm not going to call your best friend and have phone sex with him while you're lathering up. Uh, stop wiggling. That's, uh... You tell I'm... you don't do that in the shower? <laughs> not in that, not in that, uh... That, uh, rhythm, exactly, maybe. Well, he's clearly got his, his strokes down, man. It does. Oh, here we go. She's looking pretty today. Yeah, she's looking totally lumpy. All right, that's that's day three. We're a third of the way through the room. It's it's kind of worth noting that unlike the movie, if you weren't recording everything at this point, you actually would not know that Mark and Lisa were having an affair, and would not know until almost the very end of the game. So this game could be very climatic. Climactic. Yeah, for... you could go through the same emotional turmoil that Johnny goes through. Or anybody watching? Well, I guess you know, not watching the movie. Never mind. Yeah. It's a different kind of emotional Delete. turmoil. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go uh, see if we recorded anything. And yeah, there's some more uh, some more phone calls today. That's one of my favorite Mark lines when Lisa's like, "I miss you," and Mark's like, "I just saw you. What are you talking about?" What are you always trying? To... Oh, she pulled the love card. That's just immature. Yeah, it is. Mark Mark should know, man. You don't stick your dick in crazy. Never Maybe. promise crazy a baby. Oh, don't don't be pulling references. <laughs> I have to. Yeah, yeah. It was to. good. It was I, good. I appreciate that. So that's that's our recording of everything for today. Uh, I didn't realize there was actually a phone in the bedroom there. I wonder if I can record on that. I wonder if Lisa mm -hmm. would get suspicious. Maybe maybe a little, but. Anyway, let's uh, go check on Denny's diary again, as always. So if we get all nine of these, it'll be a. I don't know. A complete run through, I guess. A 100% playthrough. The only game I've ever let's play at 100%. The Room. <laughs> it's uh, that's quite the feat. Yep, I can put that on my CV. Question: Out of all the times you've watched the movie, how many of those were actually sober? Uh, I've seen it sober maybe like three or four times, but drunk like probably close to ten. Uh, I think you should have let's played this drunk yeah, I'm, I'm wasted right now oh, really <laughs> totally smashed on this high sea man anyway I'm yeah high, i'm high in life <laughs> <laughs> wow okay so we didn't get our promotion <laughs> again so we're just gonna go home johnny johnny's <laughs> work day surprise. 10 minutes long yeah i love you try to walk in here and then he's just like i better see what that bitch claudette wants first uh, shirley hamilton yeah she's famous and then Claudette's like, blah, blah, tons of problems. My like brother cancer. wants to share my house. I've got cancer, that old rag that you hear every day. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny's rage meter starts to build up. And uh, we don't get to see him explode just yet, but uh, trust me, there is some catharsis when the rage meter hits full. You don't, you don't want to get in Johnny's way. No. 
Yeah, he, he's a he's a firecracker. He ruins TVs. <laughs> Claudette told us to go uh, go cool off on the roof, so we're gonna go hang out with Mark up here. This is probably the most famous scene in the movie. They're like, "I did not hit her. I did not." Oh hi, Mark. So we got this little uh, kind of cutscene, pseudo cutscene going on here between Johnny and Mark. Mark, of course, is wearing his trademark Old Navy casual wear, whereas Johnny is wearing uh, those pants with the zippers that you can zip off to turn into shorts, along oh, with a suit and tie. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember back in uh, grade 7, grade 8, when a few kids wore those, and I hated them about as much then as I do now. Yeah, man, but you know, fashion comes uh, a little bit later to Eastern Europe, which is where Tommy Wiseau is from. It is a little utilitarian. You know? Yeah, man, you're living in San Francisco. Sometimes you need pants, sometimes you need shorts. <laughs> Who wears short shorts? <laughs> I hope this Johnny should be doesn't three stages, though. you know, pants, <laughs> knee shorts, and then short shorts. That's... Yeah, man. Well, you put any more zippers on that, they'd weigh more than the person wearing them. I mean, it is San Francisco, after all. Lots of guys wear short shorts there. Uh, yeah, that is true, actually. It well, is. I mean, not that I would know. <laughs> not that I would know. <laughs> what are you wearing, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that. Anyway, we have this... This cutscene's, like, pretty much over now. Mark was basically like, I knew this girl who cheated a lot on her boyfriends, and then one of them fucked her up so bad she fucking died. And then Johnny is like, that's a great story, man. I laugh my ass off. Ha uh -huh. Denny, you're so happy. Yeah, Denny's got a Wicked Widow's Peak going on there. He looks like a retarded Vegeta. And he also looks like, uh, I don't know, Julia Roberts' is half... <laughs> Julia Roberts' is half-brother. <laughs> because of the smile it's like it goes forever that's a majestic smile it is so we've uh, entered into the football portion of the video game now every once in a while we'll have to you know catch a football or throw a football and get these delicious fmvs to level up our football skills johnny or denny really threw me a long ass pass there dude we're on the roof you could have killed me or you could lose the ball yeah even worse I mean, usually you lose the ball on the roof, not off the roof, but hey. That's what the room does, man. It subverts normal storytelling. Yeah. It does things however it pleases. Makes you question life. Yeah. So Denny's like, hey, I'm in love with Lisa. And you're like, yeah, no shit. You've got her pictures all over your fucking broom closet. You just caught you jerking off while you were taking a dump looking at them. But yeah, uh, yeah. no problem. No problem, Denny. If a lot of people love each other, the world would be a better place to live. I prefer to love things. You're a, you're a thing lover. Yeah, I hate people. Yeah. I love The Thing, the movie. That's a good one. Uh, not me. Yeah. And we learn that Denny actually has a girlfriend, which is kind of shocking, because you know, where do they hang out? Obviously not at his place, unless he's literally dating... Rosie O'Donnell in that movie where she played a retarded person. Is that the movie where she gets shot in the leg and falls in the pool? I don't think so, man. I think that's a look <laughs> of their own. No, it's not. <laughs> oh. You know, I think and maybe Denny just doesn't even have, like, Elizabeth is imaginary girlfriend and he writes it in his journal to, like, make it seem real. Oh, yeah, because he knows Johnny's reading it. Well, maybe not even. It's just to convince himself. Oh, so he's got some serious psychosis like going on. Psychological issues. I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me. We got Doc Brown again. Nice little Easter egg, I guess. I, I love Doc Brown. Anyway, we'll oh. stop in. Uh, I'm going to get a medium hot chocolate, please, because that's what Johnny always orders in the movies. And uh, that actually gets you an achievement. And of course, cheesecake. Johnny will have the cheesecake, as everyone else on Earth does. Johnny. Oh, sorry, Denny. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Who's that? What's that other guy who's standing there, just flippy doing up his hair? Just, he's, he's a barista, just man. Well, barista, me some coffee. <laughs> so yeah, Johnny's customer of the year again. Everybody's favorite customer. I like the portrait of him. It's a good one. Like... I caught him in a good, uh, good moment. Yeah. Oh, his mouth is weird. That is how he looks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the scary uh, part is like in the room he was probably like he had makeup on man I wonder how he looks normal <laughs> as normal as he can look anyway probably has scales wouldn't surprise me 
He's pretty muscular, man. Like, muscular like an animal. So, ugliest woman goes to uh, Miss Clown there in the middle. Yeah, Miss, like, Raccoon cats. face. Raccoon face, wow. I don't see why we had to bring race into it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, the animal, you know? Yes. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, okay. So we have this, uh, this is the most heated discussion we've had with Lisa. Things are getting crazy, because Le- Johnny's like, hey, why'd you tell your mom that I hit you, you dumb cunt? And then... Lisa- Whoa. <laughs> hey, she is a dumb cunt. And okay, then- well, there we go, she is. Lisa's like, whatever. I do what I want, I do what I want. This is what I'm saying, that the writing, obviously these are not it's, well It's very written- inconsistent. I'm just saying, like, these aren't well-written women. Yeah. This is, like, the most evil woman ever written. Next Amazonian to Amazonian warrior. She's, she's, like, war games here. <laughs> so Johnny's rage meter is starting to build up, and now this is the moment I was talking about. You're tearing me apart, Lisa! Which is just truly fantastic. Iconic. Well, it's one of the most quoted things in the whole movie, pretty and with much. with good reason. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much uh, pretty much it for this uh, part of the video, is it yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, we're reaching the end of uh, day four. So we will see you guys in the next part. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs>